Warning, these tutorial videos do not replace ground school and should be used only for entertainment purposes. Learning on simulators and perhaps as a quick revision before written or practical exams. Although, if you don't know most or all of this stuff, you're in need of serious revision. In other words, you're screwed. Hey guys, welcome to another video tutorial. I'm back on Flight Gear. I'm still not very used to it, but um, it serves well for demonstration purposes. I know last time it didn't do too well for me, and while well, I was contradicting myself, just because I couldn't do what I was telling you guys to do. But it all comes with practice, especially with simulators. But yeah, I'm just going to talk about takeoffs in more details, because I was very quick last time. Um, for every aircraft, you have, to, uh, you have to prepare your aircraft for takeoff. And this changes for different ones. But this is a Cessna 172, so we'll, we'll quickly talk about it. Um, this first things first, uh, engine has to be warmed up in real life, so once you turn on the engine, you should uh, wait at least five minutes, so that would involve taxiing and doing all your radio checks, etc. So you don't really do much waiting, just except when if you're holding at the runway. But now let's just talk about um, pre-flight checks. Normally you check for your carburetor make, uh, heater, make sure it's working, because if it's not, you don't want to take off, in case, especially if it's a cold day. Um, another thing you check normally would be for a fuel pump. This is a Cessna, and the fuel tanks are on the wings, uh, and therefore there is no fuel pump because it's all done by gravity. So that's good. Um, another thing you would look for is just your flaps. So let's go ahead, put uh, two volleys of flaps. Um, you might just, uh, get away with one in a runway like this. You might even get away with not putting any flaps. The point of the flaps is that although they do uh, create drag, they also give the aircraft the lift. Therefore, you can take off at lower speeds, and that is why we use uh, flaps when we take off. Okay, now it's pretty much done. We also have to make sure the trim's there. So here we go, and always check. For the mixture, you always want the mixture to be full, no matter what kind of uh, propeller aircraft you're in. Uh, so that's pretty much there. So of course, there's more things. We also have to check that all systems are working fine. So you know the fuels, are, fuel levels high enough. You have the fuel temperature and fuel pressure that they're in the green, like here. And then there's the uh, the voltage here. It should be in the green there. So that's okay. Especially when it's a simulator, it shouldn't be any problem or anything, but you have to check these things in your life. But for simulator purposes, all you need to do is put the flaps on and know your takeoff speed. This is Cessna 172, so your takeoff speed is going to be of 55 knots. And for every aircraft, that varies a bit. But yeah, but how to tell, how to know when your takeoff speed is? Well, very easy. You can start, you can safely get off the ground at the beginning of the green part of the airspeed indicator but really you want to come in about 5 to 10 knots afterwards and in the case of the Cessna 172 it will be between 55 and 60 knots yeah, some people even like to keep it at 65 but I don't simply because it can damage the gears if you are not on a concrete runway so next step would simply be to put full throttle and release brakes if you've got them on like I do. So let's just give that a demonstration. And beforehand, don't forget that you have to uh, mess around with the rudders there. That I'm messing around with right now. Uh, trim is okay. Sorry, yeah. The rudders, what they'll do is they will control the well, rudder at the back of the, of the aircraft. Now, let me see if I can get you a view on this. Uh, the rudder is this part here. And what the, the pedals do is they'll control this, but they'll also control the front landing gear, which will change the direction on the ground. So what will happen is, as we press down on the left foot, the wheel will turn to left, and thus the aircraft will turn to the left. And it's pretty much a steering wheel with your feet, so it's very easy. Don't forget also that in small aircrafts, the brakes are also on the feet, the left brake on the roof left feet, foot, etc. And what you do is you press with your toes for the brakes and you use your heels for the rudders. Now so that you don't accidentally press on the brakes when you're taking off, 
you do what's called heel to floor. So very simple, you just put your heels on the floor and you use your toes to control the rudders only when you're on the runway. When you're taxiing, you want to put your whole foot on the pedals. We are the aircraft's a bit crooked, so let's just put it uh, back into the axis of the runway. And we'll imagine we've got permission to take off, so let's get full throttle. There we go. And we start accelerating. Now we make sure all of our instruments work, are working. Remember last time we were talking about aborting landing. There you go, I'm not doing very straight, but that's okay. So there you go, I'm reaching the rotation speed, which is takeoff speed, so I start pulling slightly. There you go, I'm going up very easily this time. Uh, this is because last time we got to put up uh, down flaps. Remember, a very average mistake you should never, never do, especially if you're in a short runway. So I am now going up, and you want to keep your velocity, your airspeed, to about 70, 65 knots. This is a simulation, it doesn't really match me, but make sure you know your air VSI. Distance, a ver uh, vertical distance to horizontal distance uh, achieved. Uh, you'll know more about this in ground school, but it's very simple. Anyway, so you make sure your constant uh, velocity between 65 and 70 knots. I've reached uh, about 300 feet above the runway, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring up the flaps and put the seat down on the right. Okay, and as you see, my airspeed will uh, increase, and my nose will want to go down, but I'm going to pull it up a bit, just to keep that airspeed constant between 65 and 70 knots. You have to be more specific in real life, but it's a simulator, so we'll just, we'll just um, vary with uh, an error of 5 knots. So there you go, that's a successful takeoff, and uh, roughly a constant uh, ascending rate. So I was a bit more detailed there on the takeoff, but pretty much the same information. It's very basic takeoffs, really. So um, there you go. That's all there is to takeoffs. Thank you for watching. Very short video this time, uh, which is best disposed. I don't really like posting ten minute videos like I did last time. Uh, enjoy flying. Good luck for everyone who's doing the PPL, and if you're just messing around simulators, all enjoy. Warning, these tutorial videos do not replace ground school and should be used only for entertainment purposes. Learning on simulators and perhaps as a quick revision before written or practical exams. Although, if you don't know most or all of this stuff, you're in need of serious revision. In other words, you're screwed.